Hello and welcome back to Get Up In Game. My name is Josh and today on Change Your Game, I'm very excited to finally be discussing the topic that inspired this series in the first place, modular encounter sets. Now to me, the modular encounter set system in Marvel Champions is one of the main things that sets this game apart from every other cooperative game. I don't know of any other game that gives you as many opportunities to customize your experience. Lots of games let you customize your hero deck and even modify the difficulty of scenarios. But to actually be able to choose some of the construction of the villain deck was a stroke of genius on the part of the designers. But I know from reading social media and talking to other players online that there are still plenty of people out there that aren't taking advantage of this. And so like every other video in this series, I'm hoping to encourage people just to give something a try that maybe they've never done before. And just like with the what order to buy things in video and all the deck building videos, I'm going to do as much of the heavy lifting as possible for you. So that hopefully by the end of this, you'll be as excited as I am to try out different modular encounter sets with the villains that you've played over and over again. It's just such a great way to vary up the experience to make that 375th time you fought Rhino feel at least a little bit different. So as you can see here, I have all of the encounter sets in the entire game laid out, except for I don't have the Kree Fanatic print and play one printed out. I just never got around to doing that. And it's too bad because it is a really cool looking one, but I don't have it in card form. And we're just going to take a little bit of time to go through every single one of them, discuss what elements that they might add to an encounter deck, how they vary from other modular encounter sets, how to determine sort of the difficulty of the modular encounter sets, and what type of villain each one would kind of work best in. We're also going to take a look at the anatomy of a villain to kind of get an idea of how they work, to help you have an understanding of which encounter sets go best with which type of villain. We're going to categorize every modular encounter set into five or six different categories just to help narrow down your choices. Also, this video is meant to be used in conjunction with a thread I'm going to start on BoardGameGeek, where I'm going to have all of this stuff written down. So if you care to, you'll be able to go back and reference that whenever you want to. I'll have the link in the description. You don't have to have an account or anything. It's You can just click on the link and it'll take you right to the thread. And you'll be able to look at all the information that I have presented here. That way you don't have to keep coming back and watching this video over and over again. And my plan is to keep that list updated as new encounter sets come out. So I am very, very excited to dive into this. But first, let's quickly talk about why do we even care about changing out encounter sets. Now, like I said at the beginning, I know that there are at least a few players out there who are still somewhat reluctant to change out the modular encounter sets when they set up a scenario. And I think that's for a few reasons. I think one of the biggest ones is this little word right here, recommended. Recommended bomb scare. I so wish that that word recommended had been changed to suggested because that's really what it is. You see that word recommended and that has sort of an air of authority to it as if to say that this is the best way to play this scenario. But really all it means is this is a balanced way to play the scenario roughly in the difficulty we intended it to be. You know, I think some players see that word recommended and they think, you know, this is the best way to play this scenario. And if I put in a different encounter set, what if I make the scenario wrong or not fun or I break it and I can assure you that that's just really not a concern the designers fully intended for people to switch out the modular encounter sets and I know it does say that in the rule book but I do wish that they had maybe hit that note a little harder because it is such a huge part of the game's design but then you see that word recommended and it just immediately makes you think hmm maybe I shouldn't they recommended bomb scare so I'm just going to stick with bomb scare because they're the designers but that's really just a suggestion of this is a great way to play this one and we know from the core set that they gave us five encounter sets, and there are only three required in the scenarios in the encounter set. So Legions of Hydra and the Doomsday Chair aren't even recommended in any of those. So surely they intended for us to play with those. So that's one reason I think that maybe people just sort of never got around to trying it. Another reason I don't think gamers want to switch out the modular encounter set is because it could mess with the difficulty of the scenario. When people were being very vocal online about how difficult running the Accuser was, in an interview, one of the designers said, we knew he was hard, but we just assumed people would switch out the modular encounter set to make him easier. We were surprised to find out people don't want to do that. So again, it was fully their intention for us to do that, but I think they underestimated gamers' desire to beat something the way it was presented to them. And I totally get that too. I definitely understand the mindset of wanting to overcome Ronin with the Kree militants in there. But the way I see it, that doesn't mean every single time you play Ronin for the rest of your life, you have to deal with the stupid Kree militants. You know, beat Ronin once or twice, overcome that hurdle. And then for me, if I ever want to play Ronin casually, which frankly I never do, 
But recently I played Venom Goblin on my channel and I rarely play him casually, but I switched out the Goblin gear, which is incredibly difficult for the fantasy modular encounter set, which is a significant step down difficulty wise. And I was actually able to enjoy Venom Goblin in a casual atmosphere. I've beaten him with Goblin gear. I've overcome that hurdle, but I don't want to play him that way every single time, but I would like to play him once in a while because I do think he's a cool villain. So it's nice to have that option that I can step down that difficulty if I want to and still enjoy a good challenge, but maybe not overwhelmingly difficult. And the final main reason I think people might not be as interested in doing this is just because it monkeys with the theme. It probably would be kind of weird for Armadillo to be out in space with Ronan the Accuser, so I can see why you wouldn't want to change into something like that. And don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of the theme too, but I've also read comic books long enough to know that it's not entirely outside the realm of possibility that somehow Armadillo could end up hanging out with Ronan the Accuser. So for the sake of fun, I try not to let that bother me too much. But again, I totally understand why people might not want to do that. So that's another reason why I think people might be reluctant to change them. Now, the good news is there are other modulars that could still pair up with someone like Ronan. You know, in each box, there are multiple modulars that are still themed within the same general idea. So even if you don't want to go too crazy, you know, you could switch out the Kree Militants for, say, the Band of Badoon or the Space Pirates, and you're still going to get that same flavor, but maybe he's not quite so difficult. Or even it's not even about difficulty necessarily. It's just, you know, a different scenario. It plays a little bit differently from every other time you've played him. So those are the main reasons I think people probably don't try switching out the modular encounter sets. They're afraid of messing up the scenario. They don't want to feel like they cheated by making it easier, and they don't want a wonky theme. But now I want to offer a few reasons why I think it's totally worth it to give it a shot. And the first one kind of goes back to something I said earlier. You know, if you played Rhino a whole bunch of times, it's worth switching out the bomb scare just for the sake of variety. You know, it's the same scenario every time if you don't switch out the modular encounter set. So it's just nice to see something new every now and then. Now, I'm not suggesting by any means that the first time you play a scenario, you change the modular. I myself always play the recommended set the first few times I play a scenario. In fact, with Mutant Genesis, I still haven't really changed the modulars out too much because I'm getting to know the scenarios the way they were recommended. I do think that's a perfectly great way to play. This is more about when you've already played the scenario a whole bunch of times, you're going back to something old, and you just want to see something new. I think that's where the modular encounter sets can really shake things up, and Rhino, for example, becomes more interesting again. And I know we said one of the reasons you might not want to do it is because of a wonky theme. But on the other side of that coin, wouldn't it be fun to see what kind of stories you can tell by putting a giant dinosaur inside Rhino's deck instead of that boring bomb scare team? So much more interesting. So sometimes theme can be a positive thing just to do something a little different. Bringing back the Kree militants for a second, yeah I can see how it might feel like cheating if you try to beat Ronan without keeping these guys along, but on the flip side of that, how much more interesting would it be to see if you could beat Rhino if he had these guys with him? So making an easy scenario harder might be a really good reason to change out the modular encounter set. And the final main reason, and one of the best I think, to switch out the modular encounter sets is to make your hero just more fun to play. What if you're in the mood to play Thor or Valkyrie or say Rocket who relies on minions, but you don't wanna be limited to which scenarios you can play against. I've seen many people mention online forever that Thor is only good in certain scenarios because you need all those minions, but you are fully in control of which minions you put in that deck. So if you're in the mood to play Thor, but you're sick of playing Ultron and Mutagen Formula and Zola over and over again because those are the ones that have all the minions, you could still grab someone like Absorbing Man who doesn't have any in his main deck and only a few in his recommended set and throw the Band of Badoon in there or the Space Pirates or any number of other modulars that have a lot of minions and then Thor works perfectly well in those situations. And it's not limited to just that. You could use that to either improve or make difficult a certain deck strategy. Like say you're playing a one way or another deck and you want to really challenge yourself, you could make sure to put modulars in there that have really difficult side schemes so you're balancing out the power of this card. And things like that, you know, the modular encounter set can really give you a lot of control over the experience that you want to have. So if you do want to make a scenario harder or easier, more tuned to your deck style or more against your deck style, you have that control. And I'm really hoping to encourage everybody to be willing to give that a try. It's not cheating. You're not doing anything wrong. You're just making your experience more fun for you. Now, that being said, if it really does bother you, I am in no way saying that's wrong. I totally am just trying to help everyone have the most fun. And whatever that looks like for you, please keep doing that. I just happen to be a huge fan of these modular encounter sets. So, you know, that is, of course, the point of the video is to encourage it. But if you don't want to do it, please, please don't feel like you have to. I'm not telling you anything like that. 
Okay, I think I've made that case as to why I think you might not be doing it, as well as why I hope you'll give it a try. So next, let's take a look at the anatomy of a villain and see if we can figure out where the modular encounter set fits in with their regular cards. If you watched the second video in the series where I broke down Captain America's hero kit, and we discussed all the different types of cards that were present there and all the different themes, in order to determine which kind of cards would work good in a deck for him, we can do the same thing with a villain kit. For the most part, they're all pretty similar. They have the same types of cards in them, but they have different quantities of each type, and they, of course, have their own theme. So if we just take a look at Rhino's cards here, he's going to have some minions, he's going to have some treacheries, he's going to have some attachments, and he's going to have some side schemes, and pretty much every villain has those types of cards. But if we look at his specifically, you know, we see he has four minions, which isn't very many, two with guard, and then two just slightly bigger ones that aren't very scary. He has three copies of Stampede. Every villain pretty much has cards that give them extra activations. You know, you always want to factor in the standard encounter set. And between the two assaults, the two advances, and the gang up, that's five extra activations in the encounter deck always for pretty much every villain. And then usually they have two of their own. Here, Rhino has three. So that's why when you play Rhino, you feel like he's attacking you all the time. It's because he has six cards in his deck that give him extra attacks. And then Rhino's theme is basically attack a lot and then heal. So here he has two hard to keep downs that give him four health back. He has two I'm toughs that give him tough statuses so that prevents damage. And then when we look at his attachments, they all still stick with that same theme. He has the horn that gives him plus one attack. He has the Rhino suit that's gonna prevent damage to him. He has two copies of charge. They're gonna let him deal extra damage when he attacks. You know, these all center around the same central theme. And then he just has two very basic side schemes just to sort of teach the players how these work. These don't really do anything. But when we look at his cards in conjunction with Bomb Scare, which is the recommended set, we see that he had a little bit of everything. And what they have recommended is a modular encounter set that also has a little bit of everything. It's got another type of side scheme, very basic. It has a couple more minions. And then it just has a few more treacheries that don't do anything very specific to Rhino. They're just very straightforward. So he has a good mix of cards, and then his recommended set also has a good mix of cards. But if we take a look at Sabretooth, for example, his deck looks similar to Rhino, but it is different in a very important way. So if we look at his cards, you know, of course, he's all about trying to get to Robert Kelly, so he's attacking a lot because he wants to make undefended attacks against you. So similar to Rhino, he gets a lot of extra activations. He gets three extra attacks in addition to the three that are already in the encounter deck because of the standard set. Then he has two more treacheries that deal damage to Robert Kelly. He has an attachment that gives him stalwart, which means you're not gonna be able to stop him from attacking you. He has an attachment where he does even more damage. And then he has some side schemes that again, go along the theme of what he's trying to do. So Sabretooth's kit is incredibly focused on doing just one thing. What it doesn't have is a single minion. It relies entirely on its recommended modular sets, the Brotherhood and Mystique, to add minions to this scenario. And that gives you a clue about the type of encounter sets that you would want to include here. You know, with Rhino, he had a little bit of everything, so you could kind of get away with putting just about any kind of modular encounter set in there, and the scenario is still going to feel like it works just fine. But if you added the encounter set ship command, for example, to Sabretooth, which one, I absolutely love the concept of that theme, but it doesn't have any minions in it either. So if this was the modular you chose to switch in, you're going to have an incredibly strange experience because you're never going to have any minions to fight. You know, you might have cards in your deck that you put there specifically to fight minions, and that's just not even going to be an option. So my point in all of this is that while you can absolutely put any modular encounter set in any scenario, and you're gonna, probably still going to have fun, but I do think the recommended type of encounter set is usually best to provide the most balanced experience. Again, if you want to have like a really out there experience where you're just fighting Sabretooth one-on-one, -on -one, no minions, you can build a deck that's going to do that. I think that's amazing. And that's definitely a way to go. But in general, if you're still hoping to have, you know, the same type of experience with Sabretooth, but maybe you just want to see some different cards, then that's where most of the rest of this video is going to come into play. We're going to go through and we're going to sort all the encounter sets into types, and we're going to talk about which ones work best with the recommended sets that are already set with the villains. Okay, so now I'm going to hopefully somewhat quickly 
go through every single modular encounter set that's come out. We're going to talk about its theme. We're going to talk about the type of effects that are in it to sort of figure out where it fits in with certain villains. We're going to identify the things you can keep an eye out for to help figure out its difficulty. And then we're going to sort them into categories that are going to correspond with that list that I'm going to make on Board Game Geek that you can go back and reference. And you'll be able to mix and match those based on the categories on the list if you so desire to. So let's start out with the core set. We already mentioned Bomb Scare that's recommended for Rhino. It has a very basic side scheme, really nothing to speak of there. Two very wimpy minions. Uh, an explosion that kind of goes along with the side scheme. And then really the hardest part of Bomb Scare is probably just these two false alarms that can just straight up confuse you. These actually do add a little bit of difficulty anytime you see status effects. That's something to kind of be aware of that certain villains might actually really enjoy confusing you. So this might go well with villains that want to scheme a lot or with other situations where you might be tempted to flip down more often. Confuse effects could be effective with those types of villains. Now with this type of encounter set, I just call this a nice mix. I know it's not a very creative name, but this really is just a little bit of everything. You got a couple minions, a couple treacheries, a side scheme. It's not really too heavily doing one thing. And there actually aren't that many modular encounter sets in the game like this. Most of them are a lot more focused, as we'll start to see here soon. And there aren't very many villains that recommend a set like this that are a nice mix. Usually they're pretty focused. So, But that's what I'm calling this category. So Bomb Scare is the first in our a nice mix category. The next one we see is the Masters of Evil that are recommended with Claw. This is what I call heavies, or just a group of sizable minions, medium to large minions. They have seven health, six health, five, six. And I don't have any hard and fast rules because they've done a good job of making these pretty variable. A lot of them don't fall perfectly into certain parameters. So this has four minions, so I do consider this a group of minions. Pretty much anything three or more could potentially be a group of minions. And since these are larger, I'm calling these heavies. And that makes sense for Claw. He wants to run with this type of group. So when I see something like that recommended for him where he wants Masters of Evil, then anybody in the heavies category is going to work nicely for Claw. You're going to get a similar experience to what the designers wanted, but you're just not fighting Radioactive Man over and over again. Now, one thing that this set offers that's another thing to keep in mind when it comes to difficulty is boost effects. Every one of these guys has a nasty boost effect. And again, that works nicely with Claw because he gets the extra boost card. So it makes sense that they're recommended. But trust me, lots of the heavies have nasty boost effects. So switching them out, you're not going to lose out on that part of the experience. Uh, other than that, they have a side scheme that summons one of them. That's very typical in this type of encounter set. And they also have a treachery that works well with their trait as well. So we're going to see a lot of this type of stuff. Though there is a lot of variety, there is also a lot of similarity. And so when you're switching one of these out, you're not, you're not going to break the scenario. You're not going to make it worse. You're just going to make it a little bit different. But that goes back to something I was talking about before. You know, Claw recommends a group of heavies. If you put in a counter set that doesn't have any minions, that is going to produce a pretty different experience with Claw, especially considering a big theme of his scheme is spitting out extra minions. If there's very few in the deck, that's going to change the experience. And that's for better or for worse. That's totally up to you. If that's what you're looking for, you can get something different. Or if you want to keep it similar but slightly different, you just go with another group of heavies. So we're just going to set those guys right there. There's going to be six categories total, so hopefully I have enough room here. The next one we see in the core set, and the last one that was recommended, is the under attack one. This one goes with Ultron. And here we really get to see how cool the design is of these modulars because you know how Ultron, he is all about minions. He is already pumping out drones all over the place and he has three of the advanced Ultron drones. So he has plenty of minions. So his recommended set doesn't have any. Instead, this is an opportunity for the designers to put different effects in his deck because the set itself already has plenty of minions. So here we have what I call villain support which is gonna be kind of a broad category by the end. You'll see, like I said, there are some modular encounter sets that really sort of defy categorization. So a few of them just kind of end up in the villain support, but it's really, it's largely themed around villain attachments that are gonna make the villain harder, just generally treacheries that mess with the player or improve the villain's experience, or maybe just add a lot of side schemes that are again gonna hamper the player, but they don't have any minions. So anytime you see a villain that's recommended a set like under attack here, like Zola has also recommended this set, anything from the villain support category will work nicely with them because the designers knew they were already filled with minions. They didn't need more minion sets. And so if you want to give them more minions and just make it wild and crazy and you really want to go for a big fight, then don't put a villain support group in with them. Just grab a group of heavies or another group of minion type we're going to see soon 
and just see how many minions you can get engaged with. That'll, that'll definitely change up your experience. But if you want something similar, but at least look at some different cards, see some different effects, then you just put in a different group of villain support cards. And now we come to the last two that were never in the recommended for any of the core set villains. So if that's all you've ever played and you've never switched out the modulars, you've never even countered the Legions of Hydra, which might be a good thing because this set is pretty tough. It has two copies of the side scheme, which is a hazard, and it's difficult to get rid of because it ends up getting a lot of threat on it. And it summons this minion who you can't even get rid of until the side scheme is gone. And so it ends up creating a real problem for yourself. And then it also has three guard minions. Now, this is another thing that I consider important to look for when you're trying to determine the difficulty of a modular encounter set. The more guard you put in a villain deck, the harder it gets. You've probably been in the situation before where you have the win in your hand and you just have to survive the villain phase. It's a close game, but you have just enough damage to win. And then sure enough, a guard minion pops out and that's going to eat up for the damage that you were going to put on the villain. Might stop you from winning and cost you the game. So when thinking about which modular encounter sets to put in a villain, always keep an eye on how much guard is in the set because that can actually make it a little bit difficult. Now, these minions themselves aren't too bad. They do have two attack and they give you an extra encounter card when they get defeated. So these guys are surprisingly annoying, but they're not overly difficult. But the set as a whole is pretty tough. Legions of Hydra is a rough side scheme, especially if you're playing a Hydra villain because that just adds even more threat to it. And this is another group that I would call heavies. There's a six health minion and then three fours, so none of them are too small, and there's four of them. So I'm going to put this in the same group as the heavies, so like you might consider using this in Claw instead of the Masters of Evil. You're going to get a similar experience, but with different cards. And the final encounter set and the core set, and still one of the most terrifying ones in the game to this day, is the Doomsday Chair. Now this is a new type of encounter set we haven't looked at yet. I call this the Lieutenant, because this encounter set is all just built around one scary minion. We have Modok here. He has eight health, two scheme, two attack, and retaliate two. I can't think of another character in the game yet that's been printed with retaliate two. That's just horrendously awful. So now you might be thinking, okay, that's fine, but he's just one minion in the deck. Well, a big trait of the lieutenant style modular encounter sets is they usually have a side scheme that summons the minion. So if the doomsday chair pops out and Modok's not in play, you get to go grab him immediately. So it's basically as if there were three copies of Modok in the deck, which is far more likely to find him. So if you put him in there, there's a good chance you're going to see him. And then another common trait of the Lieutenant style of modular encounter set is they usually have some other cards that support that minion specifically, or at least whatever that minion's trying to do. In this case, we have three copies of this biomechanical upgrade that is going to go on the minion with the highest printed hit points, which if Modok is in play, it's going to be him. And it basically gives him an extra life. You defeat him once, this gets detached, and then you kind of go through his eight hit points and retaliate two again. So this is a particularly difficult encounter set, and the lieutenant ones often are, or at least the minion itself is really scary. What's interesting about this type of encounter set is there are almost no villains in the entire game that recommend this type of encounter set. In Mutant Genesis, we see two that call for Mystique, and she's that type of encounter set. And Loki has the Enchantress, but that's just about it. So what's interesting about that is we have a lot of these sets that would pretty much never get used if you didn't ever change out your modular encounters because nobody's ever calling for them. And what I like to do with these, because there's only one minion, is I think these go really well in the same villains that call for this type of set. If it's a villain support set, you know, no minions, it's just something to support the villain then I think the Lieutenant fits well in that same type of encounter where they're not looking for more minions, they're just looking for some other types of effects. Well, this is only adding one more minion to the deck, and then you get some really cool stuff to play with. So if I'm playing someone like Ultron, Zola, one of Crossbones is recommended is a villain support type, Venom Goblin, pretty much anybody that's looking for a villain support type, I might consider grabbing a Lieutenant for one of them instead, just for something different. So that's everything in the core set. And then the next thing that came out was the Green Goblin pack, which had four modular encounter sets in it. And the first one we see is the Goblin Gimmicks. This is a villain support type. There's no minions. It's all just attachments and things that help the villain do better. So we have two copies of the Goblin Glider, which is not too bad of a card. It does have three boost icons, though, so you definitely want to keep an eye on those. But it's pretty easy to get rid of, and it just gives the villain plus one attack. 
It gives them a little bit of healing. It might give them an extra boost card or cause you to spend some resources. And then just an attachment that deals a couple extra damage. This is a really easy encounter set, but it is recommended for both of the Green Goblin scenarios. So in my opinion, this one is very easily switchable. It's very on theme. It certainly goes along with what Green Goblin's doing, but it doesn't do anything all that exciting. One thing that does make this one a little bit more difficult is we have two three boosts with the Goblin Gliders, and then these all have boost effects, which can be annoying, and then these have two boosts. So pretty much any card you flip from this set is going to make the villain activation a little worse, so that's something to consider. This does add that element of difficulty to it, but the cards themselves aren't too bad. So again, this is a situation where if I want to do something different with Green Goblin, I might switch this out for either, at this point, under attack or some of the later villain support ones, or I might put in a lieutenant because he definitely doesn't need any more minions. Speaking of lieutenants, he comes with three in his set. We have the Scorpion, a mess of things set, which has one very scary minion that stuns you when he damages you, and he has quick strikes, so there's a really good chance he's going to hit you, and he hits for three and schemes for three. Like I said, he has the typical lieutenant style where he has a side scheme. This one doesn't summon him, but it kind of goes along with his theme of stunning people. And then one thing that's interesting about this and something to consider when thinking about the difficulty of these is this puts another activation for the villain in the deck. This puts a second gang up in there. So now the villain has at least six extra activations. The two advances, now two gang ups, and then the two assaults. So four extra attacks. And mutagen formula, he already has three or four extra attacks already. So if you really want to get like Green Goblin, let's keep coming at you. This is a really good one to put in there. And then he has treacheries that support him, which is, again, typical for a lieutenant-style encounter set. I like this one quite a bit. I think it's fun. He's a really cool minion. And putting that extra gang up is scary, especially with Green Goblin, because he has all those minions anyway. But I might also put that with another villain that's calling for a villain support, because it's just the one minion. The next one in the pack was Electro, another really cool one. He only has six health. He doesn't hit quite as hard. But his thing is he might do extra indirect damage to you. And the theme of this one is he likes to run the encounter deck out faster. If the boost here, you discard three cards from the encounter deck. His side scheme discards cards from the encounter deck and causes you to discard cards from your hand. And then he has some treacheries that discard more cards from the encounter deck and deal you some indirect damage or heals the villain. So when you put this in the encounter deck, you can expect to go through the deck even faster. So this could be fun with villains who are trying to get through their deck faster. That's not like a very common thing, but Sandman is certainly trying to do it. Mojo's trying to do it. And Claw kind of is with this extra boost card. So, you know, you can kind of get on point with theme with some of these where they're doing similar things to the villain and just help the villain do that even faster. That's what I like about these lieutenant ones. They're usually pretty specific in their theme, and it's not too hard to figure out a villain that they work well for. So I like Electro quite a bit. And then Tombstone is terrifying with his 9 health and 3 attack. And if he damages you, you have to discard resources from your hand. That's not great. His side scheme causes you to place more threat or spend even more resources. He's got an attachment that goes onto you that prevents you from readying or changing form. So that's going to cost you some resources. And then he has well, actually one of the worst cards in the game, media coverage. If this is in play and you don't get rid of it right away... It causes all when revealed effects to trigger an extra time. This is really, really bad. So you definitely want to get rid of this quickly, but it causes you to go to Alter Ego in order to spend a resource to discard it. This is another thing that I consider something to keep an eye on when it comes to the difficulty of these. The ones that force you to go to Alter Ego a lot, especially if you're playing solo. If you have a lot of cards in the encounter deck, they're going to force you to go to Alter Ego. Then that could really cause you some problems depending on the hero you're playing. So... This is a really good way to tune the difficulty of a scenario. If you don't want to go to Alter Ego and you kind of want to make the scenario make you do it, something like this that has these types of Alter Ego actions could be a way to do it. So you can see we already have a lot of these Lieutenant ones just in the first two products, and nobody's calling for these. So if we're not switching out our modulars, we're not playing with a pretty sizable stack of cards already. Next, we come to the Rise of the Red Skull box, and we take a look at the modulars there. The first one is Hydra Patrol. I would definitely consider this one of the easier ones. You know, you've got a Crisis side scheme, which can be a problem. And it does have some guard minions. We talked about these guys earlier. There's three of them, so that's, it's not nothing. But then we've just got two of these little Hydra regulars. They're really not too bad. Now, this introduces a new group that I'm going to call Mini Minions. 
because there are quite a few of them, and the biggest they get is four. That's kind of my cutoff, I guess. If he has four hit points or less, and there's a fair number of them, we're going to call these mini minions. And we have a few sets like this that can be fun to play with that can really take a scenario like somebody like a Sabretooth or an Absorbing Man who does call for this that doesn't have any minions in their set, and at least it adds a few to their deck. So this one's pretty simple, and that starts a new category. But this is one you could use if you want to sort of ratchet down the difficulty of a scenario, because there are some really hard villains that I never play because they're too darn hard. But if I can make them a little bit easier with something like that, just so I play them once in a while, well, that works just fine for me anyway. A sort of similar one is the Hydra Assault. It's just basically more small minions. This is five small minions and a treachery. This is another group of mini minions. Now, these are a little bit worse. They all have boost effects, except for the treachery. So that makes this scenario a little bit harder. So the boost icons will be low, but they're all going to do something annoying. They have some quick strike. That's something to keep an eye out for. If you put a lot of quick strike in the deck, it's going to make it a little bit harder. You know, normally a minion comes out, you get a turn to deal with it before it damages you, but that's pretty much going to be two damage to your face. They're probably not going to end up blocking, so that makes it a little bit harder. And then this Hail Hydra is going to make things worth, especially if you're playing with a lot of Hydra minions. So this is where the theme of these does start to play in. I, I mentioned earlier about how sometimes it's weird if you start messing with the themes of these. Certainly these Rise of Red Skull ones and the Legions of Hydra one as well, they work better with a lot of Hydra minions and Hydra villains. So they do lessen their difficulty to some degree if you do switch out into, say, a non-Hydra villain. So, But that is those guys. That one's pretty fun, actually. I do like using that one every now and then. Next, we get Weapon Master, which is a villain support type, where you get two attachments that go on a villain, the Combat Knife and the Hydra Sidearm. They're not too bad. They're easy to get rid of, and they just give piercing or ranged. But they combo with the rest of the cards in the set. These Weapon Masters, where this is two more extra activations for the villain, and then depending on it's either a scheme or an attack. So this is basically either two more advances or two more assaults. They're adding to the deck, and if they do have a weapon, and this set provides two of them, so there's a chance that they will. Then the card gains Surge. They get an extra activation and Surge. That is really nasty. This is actually a pretty tough set if you put it with the right villains. Obviously, it calls for with Taskmaster and Crossbones, who like to play with weapons anyway. But we're going to see it later. The Infinity Gauntlet is a weapon. So anybody that you give that to and then you give this to, this could be a, that could be a really nasty combo because they're always going to have a weapon. And then these are going to give them even more activations and Surge. So... This isn't overly difficult, but this is, I think, a little bit more fun than Under Attack. I like to switch this one in for that type of encounter set. And then the last one in the Rise of the Red Skull isn't necessarily technically a modular encounter set. This is specifically for Crossbones is the Experimental Weapons, and it is also part of the campaign. Most of the campaigns have one modular encounter set that is really just tied to the campaign and meant to be used that way. But you can use it if you really want to. You could throw this in the deck, and this is just another villain support. Each one of these is going to give the villain some sort of ability. This gives them plus one attack, plus one scheme. This one gives them retaliate. This one makes you discard cards, and this one gives them range. So I don't know that I would often use this, but I might consider combining this with Weapon Master, say, and that could be a really scary experience. could be pretty fun. And these are a little bit of a pain to get rid of. And these all do have two boost icons, so that makes the scenario a little bit more difficult as well. So even though I don't know if you're really meant to use these outside of the campaign, you certainly can. And the next thing we got was the Once in Future Kang scenario pack. And the recommended set for that scenario is the Temporal set, which is one of those that defies categorization a little bit because it has a six health minion with toughness and then just a whole bunch of little guys. So I'm still going to call this Mini Minions, because other than the one big guy, it's mostly a bunch of small ones. Uh, and this one's not too hard most of the time, but you have three guys with Quick Strike. And these guys can deal some indirect damage to you. And one thing I like about this one, this Time Portal side scheme, it's easy to defeat, and it shovels itself back into the encounter deck. So this is a really fun one to use if you are playing one way or another. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you're always going to have a side scheme to find with that card. So some might call that cheesy. I call it fun. You know, you decide for yourself. But I think this is a really fun set. I like these little guys here. They're easy to kill, but they could deal some damage. And of course, obviously, a dinosaur is super cool. But this is the only one you've ever played against if you'd never switch out your modulars with Kang. But he came with two others, and certainly they meant for you to play with those with at least Kang himself as well. 
the next one being the master of time himself, Kang as a minion, with toughness, and this introduced the villainous keyword, so he gets a boost card when he attacks or schemes, and he also gets boosted stats based on obligations in your play area, and he himself comes with a couple, and then if you play the Kang scenario, there are quite a few obligations in his scenario that might be in your play area, so certainly within that scenario, he can be really scary if there are a lot of obligations in your play area. Outside of that, that's not going to come into play too much. But he has a couple little guys with Insight and Surge. Certainly, the more Surge you add to an encounter deck, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult, so something to keep an eye on. Just got one not too bad side scheme. It's going to spit a minion out. And then he has cards that support him. So this is one of those that really defies categorization in the sense that it's kind of like a lieutenant in that there's one big one and cards that support him, but there are also some little minions and just there's a sort of a little bit of everything. So I'm actually going to call this one a nice mix. I think this one could play well with just about anybody. You're going to get a little bit of everything. So we're going to put that over there with Bomb Scare. Like I said, there really aren't very many that fall into that category. So maybe that's another reason why I want to put it there. And this is just for the sake of talking about it. These are not hard and fast rules. You could certainly play that with a lieutenant or anything else you want to do. That's just kind of how I'm doing it for the sake of the conversation. And the last one in the Kang pack is the Anachronauts. And this one is really nasty. If you want to jack up the difficulty of most scenarios, this will do it for you. You get two copies of the Anachronauts side scheme. That's a hazard. Anytime you're adding hazards to your encounter deck, that's going to make it harder. They have three boosts. They're going to shuffle the temporal cards back in when you defeat them, and you want to defeat it because it's a hazard. And then you just get all these really big minions that have nasty abilities and bad boost effects. This is a very bad boost set. You put this in with Claw, it's going to really wreck your day in a fun way. So like Terminatrix here gets Quick Strike and Piercing. Death Hunt has Toughness and Villainous. This is going to cause you to discard a card of random, discard an ally of support. This one has Guard with 6 health and Retaliate. It's just nasty. And then two treacheries that are going to help you find one of these minions. So this is a really, really cool set. Definitely harder than most of the recommended sets in most scenarios. So we're going to call this a group of heavies. They're all pretty big. So this one definitely plays great with Claw because they have the boost effects. And he likes running with heavies anyway. But I definitely recommend checking that one out sometime. The next set we got after Kang was the Galaxy's Most Wanted. And that introduced a very interesting set, the Ship Command, that clearly thematically is meant to be played with the very spacey scenarios of that set, but you can mix and match this with anybody that you want to. And of course, it comes with the Milano support that gives you a free resource every turn, so it's fun to play with just to have that free wild resource, but you're often not going to get to use it for that because it comes with a bunch of treacheries and a side scheme that sort of want you to use the Milano to deal with them instead. And some of these cards are actually kind of a pain, so you might get a free resource once in a while, but it's it's compensated by a decently difficult scenario. There's no minions in it, so that sort of automatically has me putting it in the villain support category. But I think it does, because it supports the villain in the way that it's causing you to spend resources on things other than dealing with him. You either have to discard cards or spend resources to deal with these treacheries. And he has an extra activation that if you don't exhaust the Milano, he's either going to scheme or attack on you. So it does add that as well. The boost icons aren't too bad, so this one isn't overly difficult. But anytime the villain is calling for a villain support type, like under attack or weapon master, maybe just throw this instead just to see what happens. So that one's pretty fun. One thing that was really awesome about Galaxy's Most Wanted is they had a lot of encounter sets, quite a few more than we had seen in any previous set. And one of my favorite ones in the whole game is this Band of Badoon. Drang calls for this one. It's just a group of 10 minions that range from pretty beefy to kind of small. We've got a 6 health, two fours, two fives with Retaliate, and then a bunch of little guys, 1 health, 2 health. So if you're playing a scenario that calls for any number of minions, this is a fun one to switch in. It's not overly difficult, but it can definitely give you a challenge. as a lot of boost effects. So again, it plays well with villains that activate frequently or find themselves with extra boost cards like Thanos, Claw. And these little guys are just really fun to smack around. So this is a set I highly recommend. This is kind of tricky. I'm going to call this Mini Minions just because there's a lot of them and most of them are 4 health or less. So with Drang, you know, he calls for these guys, but you could switch in any of these groups of smaller minions with him or any other villain that calls for smaller minions. 
Crossbones has a smaller set. Ebony Maw has a smaller set. But really, anytime anybody's calling for minions, mini minions or heavies both work perfectly fine. You just need to add minions to those scenarios. For the two collector scenarios, they both call for the galactic artifacts. This one's actually required for those sets. And this is a villain support type where it doesn't have any minions. It's just a bunch of things that either mess with the player or give the villain some sort of boost. You know, you have these cards that either sit in front of you or get attached to enemies that cause you all kinds of problems. And the thing that's really fun about this one, it has these four side schemes that are all relatively bad. Even in solo, this one starts with five threat and has an amplify, but when you defeat these, they actually do something useful for you. This one lets you draw two cards. This one lets you play a card for three less resources. This lets you ready your identity, and this one lets you heal four damage. So this one's fun to throw in just because it actually does something useful for you. But some of these other effects can be really, really nasty. So this one isn't easy, but it's not too bad. And it plays well with any villain that already has a lot of minions or someone like Red Skull or Hela that likes to play with side schemes, especially these with the victory. These could really boost Hela, which would be fun. So that one's really, really cool. We're going to call that villain support. And then weirdly enough, both collector scenarios require the galactic artifacts and they both also call for the menagerie medley modular as the recommended. Now it makes sense thematically, both scenarios take place in the same place. So it makes sense you'd run into the same types of encounters. But if you're gonna play the collector twice in a row, it is, would definitely be nice to mix things up a little bit. Now this menagerie medley set is a mix of easy to terrifying you have three copies of the Servant Bot, which is not too bad. It's three health with Garden Patrol. So if he comes out the wrong time, he might slow you down, but he's not too bad. But you have four copies of the Psionic Ghost that just straight up confuse you when they pop out. And they can get put in play with you with the boost effect. So you are definitely going to see these guys if you put this in your deck. And they have four health and two, two. And then these Star Sharks are just awful. They attack for three with seven health. They have Quick Strike and they, they deal indirect damage. So... That could really mess with you in some weird ways. So, and again, there's a lot of boost effects. This is, I would say, on the upper side of medium difficulty. This can definitely make a scenario harder. We're going to call this one mini minions uh, or heavies. See, this one kind of falls in both sides. I'm going to put it with the mini minions just because there's less, less sets of those. But it could, again, any of the minion ones could kind of go either way. If you're just in the mood to fight mostly smaller ones or mostly bigger ones, it's kind of up to you. But something like this would be really fun with any villain that's calling for minions. And speaking of minions, we have the terrifying Cree militants. Kind of use these as an example early in the video because this is one of the harder modular encounter sets in the game. All of these minions are really, really scary. Seven health, five, 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 six, 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 seven. They're just really, really big. Quick strike, guard. Patrol, they just, they're going to get in your way. They're going to slow you down. They're going to take a while to kill you. And they have boost effects on pretty much every single one of them. And then they also come with the Kree combat armor, which makes it harder to kill the villain. So this, if you want to jack up the difficulty of any set calling for minions, this one will do the trick. Especially because they have some of the nastiest boost effects. Like this one, if this activation is an attack, it gains overkill. So your chump blocking strategy goes right out the window if the villain could potentially hit you with overkill without you seeing it coming. And there's actually quite a few of those. And it also come after your tough status cards with piercing. So this one is definitely not one I throw in too often, unless maybe I'm playing an easier villain. This is where it can be nice to modify the difficulty because I would say most of these are on sort of a low, there's not a huge difference in difficulty, but the ones on the low spectrum, the ones on the high spectrum can be pretty far apart. And this is definitely on the high spectrum. This will make a scenario harder than anything else that was probably recommended to be put in it. And is one of the reasons why Ronin is so hard. So if you're okay with making a scenario easier just to maybe enjoy it more, get these guys out of there and you'll probably have a more fun time with Ronin if you play with the Band of Badoon, Space Pirates, if you want to go with a same theme, or heck, put the Hydra Patrol in there and make them a little bit easier. Now, we are definitely calling these guys heavies. They are the heaviest of the heavies that we've seen so far. Speaking of the Space Pirates, this is Nebula's group that she runs with. Another group of mini minions. These really aren't too bad as far as their size. The annoying thing about the Space Pirates is they pretty much all have Quick Strike. And when they damage you, you have to remove cards from your deck from the game. 
or in this case, remove a card at random in your hand from the game. So you get one, two, three, four, five minions. Four of them have three health, one has six. We're gonna call these mini minions. That six one's kind of scary though. And then you have a side scheme that gives each enemy plus one attack, which on its own, it's not too bad. It's pretty easy to get rid of, but in a scenario like Nebula it has so much surge, it's entirely possible that this could come out before a bunch of enemies end up attacking you. And then it has a treachery that's going to summon a criminal minion and give it a whole bunch of other stuff. So I would say this one is a little above medium and difficulty just because of the fact it's going to remove your cards from the game. You know, you have to have a plan. If you're going to throw these in a deck, which I recommend, this one's really fun to play against, but you kind of have to have a plan for it. So you can sort of create for yourself a scenario because you definitely want to be blocking these guys because you do not want to have your cards removed from the game. So definitely, if you're going to play with these guys, keep that in mind. They also all have a boost effect that's going to give the villain extra boost cards. So keep that in mind as well. But that's a good one. I like the Space Pirates. And we're going to call them Mini Minions. Now we come to a new type, the final type. We have the Power Stone that is really meant to just be played with Nebula and Ronan. It's part of their story. But again, this is a modular set. You could play this with anybody. And it sort of creates this ping pong match where you're bouncing it back and forth depending on who hit who last hard enough. And it just gives you plus one attack and plus one either thwart for you or scheme for the villain. But this is another one of those that I think you can create for yourself a really fun scenario. If you're playing someone like Quicksilver, Spider-Woman, SPDR, or anybody else that just likes to ready a lot, that likes to get a lot of activations, wouldn't it be fun to have plus one plus one the whole time you're doing that? But you do have to protect yourself or otherwise you're giving it to the villain. So I think this one's really fun to throw in every now and then. But I'm going to call this a special category. We're going to put this in its own category. All the ones in this category, and there's only a few, you know, this doesn't add any cards to the encounter deck. So if you're going to play with the Power Stone, and really you can play with it with anybody, you're still going to want to add another encounter set to the villain deck because that's not, that's not putting any cards in. And then similar to Experimental Weapons in the Rise of the Red Skull, Galaxy's Most Wanted does also have the Badoon Headhunter, which is really, again, only meant to be played with the campaign. And it's probably best kept there because this is incredibly difficult. The Badoon Headhunter himself isn't too bad. He's just a 1-1 with Villainous. He does have 7 health. But all the other cards in his set have Surge. So if, if you've played the campaign, these are meant to sort of get added to the deck one at a time, but only if you've gained some other benefit. If you put this in the encounter deck just for your modular, it's going to really, really be nasty because you're going to have two big minions. You're going to have a really nasty treachery here, pretty bad side scheme, and then another bad treachery. Like this is, this is not for the faint of heart. But again, if you're looking to make something more difficult, you could just throw this in there. And because all the cards have surge, you could actually consider putting another encounter set in alongside this one because this isn't technically going to take up space. Now it still kind of does. But in a way, you know, when these come out and they all surge, you're going to get another card anyway. So these don't really make the encounter deck that much bigger. So if you're really looking for a challenge, you can chuck these guys in there. We're going to call this a lieutenant type. There are two big minions. But yeah, we're going to call that a lieutenant. So he goes along with Tombstone there. And if you're anything like me, you're not playing the Galaxy's Most Wanted campaign all that often. So you probably haven't seen much of the Badoon Headhunter. So why not just throw him into Absorbing Man and see what happens. Next up, we have the Mad Titan's Shadow. And for my taste, this is probably my least favorite group of encounter sets. I didn't find anything particularly interesting here outside of the Infinity Gauntlet, which we will get to soon. But we'll start out with the Armies of Titan. Just a little group of mini minions. You got a couple two healths, a couple four health with guard. And these guys can be pretty annoying. These cause you to discard a card at random. And they all have boost effects, so definitely this is not an easy set by any means. It's just, it's kind of generic, I guess. When you defeat these guys, they give the villain a tough status, so that's annoying. And then they have two acceleration side schemes that if you do bother to defeat it, it's going to spit out a minion, but I don't know, half the time accelerations aren't even worth clearing. So this, this set's okay. One thing I did want to mention is these have the guard keyword, and anytime you have a villain that is calling for an encounter set like this that has guard, like Taskmaster has the Hydra Patrol and villains like that. If they're calling for a guard, that's there's actually there for a reason. They're villains that are pretty exposed. It's not too hard to beat them down. Guard is going to help slow you down so you can't just rush down the villain quickly. So when considering switching out a modular encounter set for a villain that is recommended one with guard, 
you might want to think about just putting in a different one that also has guard. Otherwise, you're not going to have a hard time running that villain down. They probably don't have a lot of health. So this is just an okay set. I don't really play with it more than I need to. But we're going to call this Mini Minion, so it goes there with the Space Pirates. Next up, we have the Black Order, some of uh, Thanos' goons. These are a little bit bigger. We have Super Giant, which is pretty nasty. Five health with Quick Strike, and if she attacks and damages somebody, they're stunned. That's annoying. This guy attacks for three with Overkill. This one's kind of weird because it's only four cards. It does have a treasury that activates if there's more Black Order minions, but, you know, there's just the two in this set. And then you have the Black Order side scheme that you can't get rid of if there's a Black Order minion in play, which, again, there's only two in this set. Now, if you're playing Ebony Maw, that calls for the previous one, the Armies of Titan and these guys. So you're going to have more Black Order ones together if you play with them together, With if you stick with the recommended so what I recommend for this one, Armies of Titan, and then the next one, the Children of Thanos. What I do with these three sets, because they're all relatively small, they're all Black Order, and they all have cards that sort of support each other, I like to combine two of them. You know, Ebony Maw already combines the Armies of Titan and the Black Order, and I think that's the way to go. So if you are interested in using one of these groups, I recommend taking any two and combining them together. You know, it makes Blood Despair a lot more interesting. It makes the Black Order more interesting. So I think the Black Order encounter set goes well with Armies of Titan or it goes well with the Children of Thanos here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call these guys and the Children of Thanos heavies. And I just sort of always play with them together. But if you'd rather have the Armies of Titan, a little bit smaller group. But I think they play best with the Black Order and then one of these other two, Armies of Titan or Children of Thanos. You know, these guys, these are the ones from the movies you might be a little more familiar with. Ebony Maw, 6 health, Proxima Midnight, 5 health, Corvus Slave, 4 health. These are a little bit bigger. Villainous, Piercing, Toughness. You know, these guys are moderately annoying, and they have boost ability. So th this isn't a medium difficulty set. I, if I sound a little down, I don't mean to. I just, I don't know. Thanos' goons, I think, are kind of boring. So I don't get too excited about these sets. But I do think if you're going to use these guys, use a couple of them together. It they're not, it doesn't make them that big. You know, we've seen definitely encounter sets that have eight, nine, ten cards. So it's okay to get these up to nine or ten. I don't think it really affects things that much. And it just makes them a little more interesting. Their cards kind of work together. And it works thematically. So if I was going to throw these guys in with, say, a claw or a saber tooth, I would grab one of the other Black Order ones as well. And yeah, you get a couple crisis side schemes. Yeah, they're just okay. So we're going to call all those together heavies. Really, the star of the show when it comes to Mad Titan Shadow is it's all about the Infinity Gauntlet. I remember when they announced that this was going to be a modular set that you could play with any villain. I was so excited for the possibilities, thinking about all the different ways we were going to be able to beef up old villains. And then I played against the Infinity Gauntlet and discovered it was incredibly annoying and have rarely ever just put it on somebody else for the heck of it. But it is cool. Now, one thing that's important I mentioned earlier, it is a weapon. So if you combine this with the Weapon Master, and you're going to want to combine it with something because this doesn't add any cards to the deck, this is going to go in the special category that if you use this, you're still going to want to use another encounter set. And this is going to give the villain a weapon, so for anything that cares about having a weapon, it's always going to have one. It automatically gives them plus one, plus one. So even if it did nothing else, it's making the villain harder. But then you have these six Infinity Stones that... Every activation either are going to trigger or get added to the play area to later trigger. And they just all do annoying things. They add threat. They spit out minions. They confuse you. They stun you. They discard your stuff. They heal the villain. So this definitely is a way, I say annoying like in a, an endearing way. Like I don't, I think it's, it's fun when the villain does annoying things in an annoying way. But you definitely can use this to make villains harder. This is fun to create challenges for yourself to see if you can overcome every villain with the Infinity Gauntlet if you've got the time to do that. And so this is a really, really just a stroke of genius design. I'm so glad they did it this way. This could have easily been tied to just Thanos. And this does make the Loki scenario probably even more difficult than it needs to be. But instead, they just they broke it out and they gave it to everybody. So definitely like this. And like I said, if you just want to create for yourself a challenge with like an easier villain you're tired of beating up on, give them the Infinity Gauntlet. It'll give you some trouble. It is going in the special category, so you're going to want to include something else with it. Next, we have the Legions of Hell modular encounter set that goes along with Hela. Has sort of that Asgard flavor to it. And you've got a couple side schemes that are going to get more threat for undead minions, but there's only two in the whole set. This one's always so weird to me. It's the Legions of Hell, and there's only two zombie guys in there. Now, it does steal your allies, 
So that's something to consider. There are a few sets like this that will mess with your allies. So if you're playing a heavy ally strategy and you want to challenge yourself, you might consider playing a modular like this that's going to steal your allies to give yourself that added challenge. And, and this turns them into undead, so it plays along with these side schemes. But I just, I don't know, I would have liked at least three or four of these little zombie guys. I just think it's weird that there's only a couple. They do have guards, so that's something to keep an eye on. And then it has this no place for the living treachery, which is really nasty. You either discard the upgrade or support you control with the highest cost or take damage equal to all of your upgrades and supports. So this is either going to do a lot of damage to you or take away your best card. So that one's pretty mean. But the rest of this actually isn't too bad. And we're going to put this one in the a nice mix category. This plays well with pretty much everybody. It's got a little bit of everything. Next up, we have the Frost Giants that play with Hela and Loki. These can be pretty tough. They're, no pun intended, they're Frost Giants, two of them that have toughness. Lafayette has toughness and four a boost icon, so definitely keep an eye on that if that's in the deck. You'd know that that's a possibility. He could stun you. The Frost Giants could stun you with the boost. Frozen card's pretty annoying. It makes it so that you can't ready and you have to go down to Alter Ego. So again, this can challenge you in that way. If you don't want to have to go to Alter Ego, this one could force you to do it. And then the Unnatural Storm is a pretty nasty side scheme that's going to exhaust every ally when it comes out, and then you sort of need to get rid of it if you want to use your ready effects. And this is another one of those that's kind of hard to categorize. We're going to call them heavies. There's only three of them but they are pretty beefy. So we're gonna put them in that category. That one could also probably land in a nice mix. You could put that with pretty much anybody and it would work fine. And finally, we come to my least favorite encounter set in the entire game, Enchantress. I've talked about this, I think in a couple videos. I think this is the, the main thing that makes Loki super annoying is her effects are just awful. You know, she comes out, she's a Lieutenant type. She's just the one minion. And she's going to search for Seduced, so you get two cards right off the bat. And then this makes it so you can't attack at all, and you have to go to Alter Ego to get rid of it. So unless you happen to have a lot of allies in your deck, you can't win without getting rid of this. You need to be able to attack the villain. And so you have to deal with that, and then she's going to steal your allies. So similar to the Legions of Hell, this is another one that could challenge an ally-heavy strategy. Or if you're playing a Voltron-style deck, this could steal your beefed up allies so that's another thing to consider challenging yourself if you're playing that type of strategy but this is one i don't use it in loki and i don't really add it to anybody else she is just the worst but if you want something annoying or pretty difficult i think this one's pretty pretty hard then you might consider grabbing her and she is a, a lieutenant type so i think she plays best <laughs> best not really but best with any villain that calls for a villain support or a lieutenant, but like I said, there's only like two of those that call for lieutenants. But if you're me, pretty much just never play with her, period. Now, if the Mad Titan Shadow was my least favorite group of encounter sets, what came with the hood is probably my favorite. There were nine encounter sets in that pack, and they're pretty much all fantastic. We'll start out with the Streets of Mayhem, which is just four environments that come into play. They all surge and they all give some sort of global effect. Everybody gets steady, everybody gets retaliate, everybody gets plus one attack, or everybody gets an acceleration icon and you get more thwart. Like these just add really interesting effects to any scenario. There can only be one out at a time and they all have surge. So I'm putting this in the special category. If you're gonna play with this set, I recommend putting another set in along with it because these aren't really gonna take up any space in the deck and they aren't really gonna do anything that the villain is trying to do. So you're gonna wanna still give them something else to support them. But this is one of those fun ones that you can just throw in any deck. And especially now that we're getting things like with Mojo that also has cards that do things like this. And say the mansion attack scenario in the Mutant Genesis box that the main scheme adds effects like this. You can start to create some pretty wild scenarios. So that is a really fun one to play with every now and then. The Ransacked Armory modular set has two armored guards and then five attachments that are going to go on minions and just do really really bad things this one should create its own category minion support but this is the only one like this so i'm just going to put it with villain support now it does add two guard minions but that certainly supports the villain so this could go well in any anybody like an ultron or a zola or anybody that's calling for just a villain support or a lieutenant type even because it's not going to add too many more minions if they already have a lot it's all just like support the minions so much as flamethrower gives them plus three attack and it's indirect the tech gauntlet gives a plus three hit points with overkill and plus one attack like these are just awesome so this is another one that it really plays well in any deck 
as long as it already has some minions because it's only adding two itself. But you could throw this in Sabretooth, say, who calls for two encounter sets. You put these in then with another minion group or crossbones, something like that. could be a lot of fun with scenarios that call for more than one encounter set. So I like that one a lot. We're going to call this villain support, even though it has a couple minions. Next, we'll take a look at the state of emergency, which is just four side schemes that all have when revealed effects. So when they come out, they do something annoying, and then they all have an acceleration icon. So really, the damage is already done. As soon as these pop out, they did something annoying, and then the acceleration is just kind of whatever. But there's also two treacheries that will trigger all the when revealed abilities on every side scheme in play. So if you don't deal with these, and it's a fun thing that they did this, because a lot of times, because of their accelerations, you might be tempted to just ignore them, because it's probably not messing with you that much. But if you do ignore them, the citywide crisis comes out and makes your life harder. And if there's other side schemes in play that the villain already has that has one revealed, it you know it triggers those too. So this is another really cool set. It doesn't have any minions. We're going to call this villain support. But this is one you could pretty much play with anybody, but it's not going to add any minions to the deck. So just kind of keep that in mind. Next, we have the Brothers Grimm, which is a lieutenant type, but it's also a villain support type. Like I said, some of these are hard to pigeonhole because there's only one minion, and he's really big, and when he activates against you, he gets one of these attachments, and all these attachments go to a mystic minion, and he is, and there's not really many others in the game. So they're either going to go on him, and if they don't go on that, they go on the villain, and they do something really nasty, and then they deal you another encounter card. So these sort of have a delayed surge. So they kind of work like a villain support, and then they give you villain attachments. That's probably where they're going to end up, but it also does have one giant minion. So it could kind of go in either category. And like I said, it's it's not that big of a deal which category I put them in. It's just for the sake of discussion. So we'll go ahead and throw it in with the lieutenant, but it could easily go in villain support as well. But I, I should say, I do really like that one. The effects on the attachments are really annoying, and it's funny that they give you another card afterwards. That one could play well with anybody that's already got a decent number of minions. Next up, we have the Beastie Boys. That's two pretty decent sized minions. One deals with Sun, one deals with Confuse. You have the very nasty treachery, Double Trouble, that stuns a character and confuses a character you control. So there's a very good chance that your hero will just get stunned and confused. And then one side scheme that when a stunner confused friendly character, take any amount of damage, increase it by one. So this one can be really, really mean. Now it only adds four cards to the deck. So when I look at something small like this, there's a lot of times I'll go ahead and include another small one along with them, especially because this is only adding a couple minions and like just a little bit. We're going to call this a nice mix of some pretty nasty minions, but it has a little bit of everything. But I would probably include another set if I was including this one. But the fact that it has quick strike and stun and confuse, I would say this leans on the harder side of medium as far as difficulty goes. So maybe pair it with an easier one if you're not wanting to make the encounter too hard or another hard one if you are. Now this one can be really nasty, Mr. Hyde. We have the star of the show here himself, a 10 health minion, and he has his counterpart here, Calvin Zabo, that if he comes out first and you defeat him, you have to go get Mr. Hyde. And you might consider not defeating him because he's only attacking you for one, but if he's in play when Mr. Hyde comes out, then that's not going to be good for you. So this one can be really, really tough, but again, it's only four cards, so you might consider adding somebody else. He does have a side scheme that makes you go find him. And also gives them a bunch of extra health, basically, and then a treachery that supports them. So this is another fun one. This can go with just about anybody, really. We're going to put it in the lieutenant group, because it's really all about just the one big minion. But that's one I would really consider putting in just about any encounter deck, and then maybe another set with it. Next up, we get Crossfire's Crew, a fun set of heavies. Just a variety of decently sized minions that all have different attacks. They don't really have a major theme. Along with these, just any group that's calling for minions, these guys can take the place of, and they'll give you some different effects you're not normally used to dealing with. They have some boost effects, just a little bit of everything. Nothing too scary. I guess it kind of has a theme of it uh, goes after your allies a little bit. But yeah, this is not, not a whole lot to say about these guys. They're just a fun group of heavies, playing with Claw, playing with... Eh, yeah, playing with just about anybody, really. In a very similar vein, we also have the Sinister Syndicate. Just another group of heavies that have a variety of effects. Now, these all have boost effects, so these are a little bit nastier than the Crossfire's crew because they're going to either get you coming or going. But similar to Crossfire's crew, there's not a whole bunch to say about these guys. I do like playing against them. It's not that they're not good. There's just no real unifying theme other than they're all criminals and that they all have boost effects. So the one thing this does have is the Sinister Onslaught card that could give 
the villain an extra activation if they are a criminal. And there's actually a decent number of them. A few of them in Sinister Motives are criminals. Rhino's a criminal. There's a fair number. So if you are playing a criminal villain, sometimes the traits on the modular encounter set are worth paying attention to. This is basically works as a gang up for criminals. So if your villain's a criminal, it's going to be even worse for you. So that's a fun group of heavies, especially if you're playing a criminal villain. And last but certainly not least in the hood is the Wrecking Crew. So if you don't enjoy playing the Wrecking Crew scenario pack very often, you can still grab these guys and play them pretty much anytime you want to. Comes with four very nasty heavies. These are some of the biggest minions that you can add to an encounter, and they all have really nasty abilities. They've all got pretty high boost icons. This is just overall going to make your encounter deck definitely harder. This is one of the harder encounter sets in the game. So if you're looking for a challenge or looking to make an easy villain harder, this is a really good way to do it. And these play well with brutes. So this, again, could kind of go along with Rhino. Or Absorbing Man is also a brute. So anytime you're looking to add some minions to a deck and you want a challenge, the Wrecking Crew will provide it for you. Next, we come to Sinister Motives, and the first one we'll look at here is the Down to Earth set. Now, this one was really all about going to Alter Ego. So if you're playing a hero that either wants to go to Alter Ego a lot and you want something to play along nicely with that, or doesn't want to go to Alter Ego a lot and you want to challenge yourself, or you're playing a villain who likes to scheme a lot and you want to challenge yourself, this could play well with that. It's relatively easy. I would say this one isn't too hard, but it definitely has some different effects that are interesting. We're going to call this a nice mix. It has a little bit of everything. It's got some pretty easy little minions and uh, just some various effects to deal with. Nothing too much to say. But the theme of it is nice, that this one really cares about like your personal life and your alter ego. Put that in a nice mix. That one's, that one's okay. I, Sinister Motives already calls for it in two scenarios, so I feel like I've played it so much that I don't really ever choose to include it, but it wouldn't be too bad. It would probably make a scenario a little bit easier if you did choose to include it. City and Chaos will not make your scenario easier because you're going to be adding Rhino to the deck. This is a lieutenant type where he has 8 health and attacks you with overkill and piercing, 3 attack. He has a card that summons him into play. And then just kind of an annoying side scheme, kind of annoying treacheries. It's mostly just all about Rhino. He's definitely, if he comes out, he's a real menace. And you've got two shots of finding him. So he's definitely one I might include if I'm looking for a lieutenant or some villain support. I'm kind of picking up the pace here a little bit because, you know, a lot of these, now that we've seen so many of them, they're all doing basically similar things they just have different flavor and i'm not saying that's a bad thing it's nice to have so much variety i just don't need to keep <laughs> saying so many of the same things over and over again but i still want to talk about them all because i think they're so cool we have one of my favorite ones in the entire game symbiotic strength this one really stands out to me it comes with the two swinging assaults that gives you the villain two extra activations including an alter ego the villain will still attack you so this was really nasty has webbed up that's going to slow you down twice uh, some extra boost cars, and then three of these little enraged symbiotes so with guard and patrol, so just a real annoying little minions, and some attachments for the villain. We're going to call this a nice mix. It could almost be mini minions because there are three, are three small ones, but there's just so much other stuff going on. This is one I really like to throw in pretty much any villain. This is really fun. Really like symbiotic strength. That's another one that if you play Sinister Motors a lot, you've already seen a decent amount because it's called for in Venom Goblin and Venom. But that's not one I'm tired of. I do, I do like that one quite a bit. And now we come to the Mysterio set. This one is the required one, the Personal Nightmare. It gives a couple of these evil doppelgangers. This one's all about your identity-specific cards. Yeah, these guys that are bigger based on how many of those you have in your hand. This one wants you to discard cards till you find some. It's either going to do threat or damage. You know, this one's a, a nice mix, a few different things. It does have the Fool's Paradise side scheme, which is just really cool. That gives you plus two hand size. But if you're foolish enough to keep it in play, it's going to have a crisis, an acceleration, and a hazard. So you're going to need to get rid of it. But you'll probably get a couple extra cards out of it at least once before you do. So this one's definitely fun to throw in once in a while. Like I said, it's a nice mix, so it can go in just about anybody. I don't think this one's too difficult. So this one, you don't have to worry that you're going to make a scenario too hard or too easy. This one just fits in nicely with just about anybody. But with the next one... Whispers of Paranoia, this brings us to a new point about some of these villains. They definitely, at this point, Sinister Motives, and you we're really going to see it in Mutant Genesis. It feels like, to some degree, you almost are feeling discouraged to switch out the modulars because this is the recommended one for Mysterio, and it's filled with illusions. 
And if you don't put this in Mysterio, he's going to have so many fewer illusions to potentially put in your deck. You know, that's his whole gimmick. So with Mysterio, he's one of those where I don't know that I really do switch out the modular very much because I want as many illusions as possible. Now, it would be cool if they came out with another modular at some point that had also had illusions that you could maybe put in there instead just for some variety. But we're going to see that. We see that here, and we're going to see that, I think, like I said, with Mutant Genesis, where everything feels very, very specifically tuned and themed to those that as much as I'm trying to encourage everybody, don't be afraid to switch out your modulars. Some of the newer scenarios, it almost feels like you're not supposed to. But but this is a cool one to use in other villains. This is a villain support type that's either just going to mess with you or boost the villain. It has kind of an annoying side scheme. The, the neat thing about this one is this will bring out your nemesis side scheme. And then one of these other cards will bring out your nemesis. So if you're lucky enough that you hardly ever get Shadows of the Past and you'd like to see your nemesis stuff more often, then throw this in there and you're pretty much guaranteed to see some of it because it's going to grab those cards. So this one's really neat to use in other sets. I just, I don't actually like taking this out of Mysterio just because I want him to have as many illusions as possible. So we're going to call that villain support. Fun to use in other villains, but probably going to keep that in Mysterio as well. Next up, we come to the Gorilla Tactics set. This is the one that's required in Sinister Six, and there's no optional modular in that one, but this one can be taken out. And this one's really neat. You have the life-size decoys that prevent you from thwarting side schemes, so that could potentially make your life difficult. And the interesting thing about this one is that in expert mode, they do worse things. That's not something we really see in any of the others. So if you're playing an expert, you might consider including this one just for that reason. And then you have these side schemes that are all worse based on how many enemies are in play. So... If you're playing a scenario like Green Goblin, it's going to probably have a lot of enemies in play, or Ultron, or Zola, or there's quite a few of them, really. I just kind of keep leaning on those. These can be really, really nasty. So if you want to challenge yourself, and you're playing a villain that already has a lot of minions, you know, this one's only adding two to the deck, so this one fits the bill for that type of villain. This could be really, really, really cool. We are going to call that a nice mix. can work with anybody, but probably works best with many, many minions. Then we come to Venom Goblin's set, Goblin Gear. This one is just so awful because of this card right here, Advanced Glider. If this attaches to the villain, they get to activate against you twice around. It's just so mean. But it also has another other annoying card. So it has Remote Navigation that summons the glider. Isn't that nice? It has these bombs, these bombs, a really nasty side scheme, more bombs. Like this one, this is one of those I mentioned earlier. And if I'm playing Villain Goblin, these come right out just because he's already so hard. He's got, he's got a lot of nasty minions and other things going on. I don't need this mess making my life harder too. So I'll just put in a nice mix or a lieutenant type that's not too hard or just a different villain support that's not as annoying as this one just to bring him down to a level where I might still choose to play him casually, but I don't have to deal with these things. So, But if you want to make another villain harder, like put these on Ultron, throw this in Zola or anybody else calling for a villain support, this will make your life harder and you get to see some cool cards. You know, I don't want to play these with Venom Goblin because he's already so hard, but I do still want to see these cards sometimes. So I'll throw them in like Taskmaster or Crossbones or somebody to make them a little bit harder so I still get to play with these cool cards, but it's not, you know, ruining my day. So that's a, that's a cool set that I don't see too often. Now, another one of my favorite sets in the whole game is the Sinister Assault. I'm so glad they did this. You know, you can play the whole Sinister Six as a scenario, but if you want to, similar to the Wrecking Crew, you can just grab them and you've got access to them in any set. This is a nasty group of heavies. They all have three boost icons, so this is going to make any deck you put them in harder. They're all really big. They all have annoying abilities. Like, this is a really tough set that is going to make any villain harder. So if you're looking for a challenge or you just want to do a Spider-Man theme, you put these guys in. If you really want to go nuts, put them in with Green Goblin. You're going to get absolutely swarmed, but you'll have the Spider-Man game of your life. These guys are really, really cool. I, I definitely like to play with these guys. I don't always win when I do, but that is a group of heavies that I really look to anytime I need a nice group of minions for a scenario. And finally, we do have the campaign modular encounter set, the Osborne tech, similar to the Badoon Headhunter. If you want to, you can put this in a deck, but you are absolutely crazy if you do. These were definitely meant to be played with the campaign. They make the villain much, much harder. These are very nasty. They all have three boost icons. They all have really bad effects, and they all have Surge. So this is more of a challenge situation if you're just seeing, like, how hard can I make a scenario? You could throw these in there as a villain support. They're not going to add any minions, but they are. Oh, it's going to be so much harder. So it's not one I'm saying I recommend, but 
it's out there if you want to try something crazy just to see how hard you can make a scenario. Next, we come to something I know many of us were looking forward to a very, very long time, being able to fight people like the Brotherhood from Mutant Genesis. This is a really fun group of heavies, just four nasty minions with annoying abilities. After they attack and damage you, they do something bad. This one's kind of on the medium side of difficult, I guess. They're not too bad, but they're definitely not easy. And one of the things that makes them difficult is these Homo Superior cards give them a ton of extra health and tough. So you've already got these guys that they want to stay in play and keep attacking you because they do things when they damage you. And then now they have all this extra health. So this is a pretty pretty tough group. They've got a card that's going to summon the side scheme that's going to give them all quick strike, which means they're probably going to get to hit you, which means they're going to get to do their annoying thing. So love using the Brotherhood. You know, the X-Men stuff, it really feels so specific to them. I can definitely see for the theme, you having a hard time putting these with somebody else. I'm still not quite there yet myself, but I know I'll get to that point where it won't feel as weird to run these with a, a claw or even like an ebony maw or something just to really shake things up. But I definitely would understand anybody's reluctance to pull these out of the Mutant Genesis scenarios, but they are they are super cool. One I'm a little less excited to put into other decks is Mystique. I actually kind of want to take her out of Sabretooth because she is just a pain to deal with. To me, she is kind of on par with Enchantress, though not quite as annoying because she's at least cooler. You know, she is super huge. She's got nine health. Her stats are based on the villain stats, so it just depends. But no one can attack the villain while she's in play. So everybody's got to turn all their attention to her. She's got toughness, and she has all these cards that get shuffled into your deck that either summon her or discard your stuff. This is a really, really tough lieutenant type. So if you're playing a villain that's calling for a villain support or a lieutenant, or you just want to really make your life more difficult throw mystique in there and kind of the same stuff i said earlier though i feel like it applies less to her the idea that you know it doesn't play outside of the x-men stuff theme wise i feel like she kind of does she just feels bigger than that to me so i don't think i'd feel too weird about putting her in a different encounter besides an x-men one but i don't really want to because she's such a pain let me come along to the first of the two sentinel sets this is the group of the smaller ones the operation zero tolerance this one has the side scheme. It's kind of weird because in the scheme itself that it comes from, the Sentinel one, Project Wide Awake, this is permanent. And so this idea that it's an alternate loss condition is actually a concern. But if you're playing this outside of that just for fun, you know, you can just thwart this away. And this idea that your allies get attached underneath it could cause you to lose isn't really that big of a deal. But they are a fun group of little minions to fight. There's a couple two health, a couple three health, and then they have some support. So this is a group of mini minions. But again, similar to the Brotherhood, like, does it feel weird to play these guys outside of the X-Men stuff? It does to me so far. I think I'll get around to using these guys outside of it eventually. But maybe it's just because the X-Men stuff is so new. Or in my head, they're just so, you know, tightly knit to their own theme that I do feel like these are slightly less switchable. And I hate to say that because that's the whole theme of this video, but just being honest. Next, we have the bigger group, just called Sentinels. There's some five health, some six health, so this is more of a group of heavies. And this one sort of all centers around this targeted for elimination attachment that if it, it's on you and you're engaged with a Sentinel, you can't change forms. But all you have to do is exhaust to get rid of it. But if you don't get rid of this, then the other cards are kind of worse. So that's kind of the whole theme with this one. This one's just okay. It's fun in the Mutant Genesis scenarios that they are four, but... I don't know that I'm rushing out to include this one, just because I think so many of the other heavy groups are so much more interesting. And, you know, again, they just feel like they belong with the X-Men. Now, a group I feel less attached to is the Acolytes. Not because they don't feel like they should be with the X-Men, they do, but I, I don't feel weird about including these guys outside of the Magneto scenario. These are just really, really cool minions, and they, they introduce that new teamwork keyword. That's part of it. Like, I want to see these guys more often. I want to fight against that teamwork. It's really neat. Now, we've seen it that's coming with the Reavers, with Rogue, so we know we're getting more teamwork in the future. And these are all themed around when you defeat them, they do something bad to you, but you want to defeat them because if they stay in play, these teamwork keywords are going to trigger more often, and you do not want that. So this is definitely a fun group of heavies I like to use. They're pretty nasty. I would say this is definitely on the more difficult side just because of the teamwork. They're going to get a lot of extra activations, and they also hit you on the way out, so that's bad too. They got a lot of boost icons. This is a pretty hard one. This is if you want to make Nagneto a little bit easier, get these guys out of there and put in a different group of heavies or even mini minions, and Magneto might not cause you so much trouble. But I do like that group, and I will be seeing them in other games. 
And if you want to be absolutely insane, just throw Future Past into any deck. And really see how long it takes to lose. Two absolutely terrifying minions, which are just super bad. This one has a bad boost effect. This one has three boost icons. This is going to bring your nemesis into play and then give it four extra health. I haven't played the Mutant Genesis campaign, so I actually haven't encountered these cards yet. They're absolutely awful. You lose nine cards of your deck under this one. You're going to take a bunch of indirect damage. Yeah, this one is definitely going to make a game harder. And it's, you know, it's meant for the campaign. It's, it's not supposed to be all together. But if you want to, similar to the other ones, feel free. We are going to call this, we're going to call this a, we're going to call this a nice mix. Wouldn't that just be a nice thing to throw in any deck? Now we come to the newest and possibly most amazing group of modular encounter sets. The Mojo Mania Pack came with six sets that are all so fantastic. Maybe it's just because it's brand new. But I know a lot of people are pretty high on this, and I am too. These are so fun. They're all themed around TV tropes. You know, this is the one based around sitcoms. And the deal with these, if you haven't seen these, is they all have an environment that comes into play and creates some sort of weird effect similar to the Streets of Mayhem. But, the, and, but they're themed with uh, what else is going on. And they're, the one with the sitcom is all about obligations. And these are all just going to sit in front of you and do something that's going to cause you trouble. And then you have to go to Alter Ego to get rid of them. And you're going to want to because if you don't, then this is going to cause you trouble if this comes out. So this is definitely one that's pretty challenging in solo because you have to go to Alter Ego to get rid of these. And it doesn't add any minions, so we're going to call this Villain Support. So this is one, if you do include outside of Mojo, I might... Also consider including a small minion group to go along with it because these are so specific. It's just adding all of these weird effects that the villain could probably use some minions to go along with it. Uh, this one isn't too hard outside of solo, I wouldn't think, but in solo, this one can really cause you a lot of trouble. So we're going to call that villain support. The next one is crime, and this one's all based around side schemes. So again, could be fun with one way or another. And these are actually pretty nasty side schemes. Now, they don't add like your typical icons like you're used to. There's no hazard or anything, but they just have some sort of a annoying effect. Threat cannot be removed from other schemes. Like, you have to get rid of that. Each friendly character gets minus two attack. The nice thing is, if you're not particularly good at thwarting, they do come with an alternative way to get rid of the threat by spending resources. So that was a consideration considering how much threat these have. The dragnet makes it the villain cannot take damage. Yeah, you have to get rid of these. This is going to move all the threat from a side scheme to the main. Like, these are just terrifying. So this one, again, we're going to call this one Villain Support just because it has no minions. It just adds a bunch of side schemes. But I think just about all of these Mojo ones, they're, there's only six, so maybe another smaller group of minions to go along with the ones that don't have minions might be the way to go. Next is the Horror one, which this one is just really cool. You have the Cultist that summons the Kraken. You have a werewolf pack that steals one of your allies when it comes into play, and then when you defeat this guy, it just discards your ally, so it's basically like you killed one of the pack, and then you still have to deal with the other one. And the vampire is pretty neat. As six health, piercing deals double damage to it, which, you know, what are the chances you have piercing? Well, it also has the bandolier of stakes, which, when it comes into play, you can choose to spend a resource to, to get this, otherwise it just goes away, and it has surge. And then you get three stake counters that allow you to turn your attacks into piercing, which is always kind of nice, but is particularly effective against the vampires. So just really, really neat that the set provides the tools with which to make the rest of it easier. It's just really neat. And then the environment gives every minion quick strike, but allows your allies to take less consequential. So that is, we're going to call that a group of heavies. So I definitely want to mess around with those and some other scenarios. They're just really, really, really fun. Now we're talking about the Brotherhood again, except it's the robot version, sci-fi. We get to see the Brotherhood and the sort of cyborg versions. And then also Magneto is a minion, which is really, really cool. Now, this one's pretty nasty. These are some pretty beefy minions that have some really annoying abilities. A very, very nasty side scheme that gives every minion guard patrol. Now, it's pretty easy to get rid of, but until you do, it's, it's going to cause you some problems. And then the Mojo Runner environment gives every minion ally toughness while it's in play. So... All of these Mojo ones are super, super fun because of the environment, adds some sort of global effect, and the cards just have so much flavor. So that is a really fun group of heavies. Next up, we have my favorite one in the Mojo pack and possibly my favorite modular counter set in the whole game right now, Fantasy. Partially because I just, I love the Fantasy theme and anything, but also these are just some really cool cards. You have this dragon with 10 health, four boost icons, 
But the thing that they have done here is it's sort of like a D&D &D theme, or I guess a video game RPG, where when you defeat these cards, you, they drop loot, like you get bonuses. And so he has a weakness to lightning, which is neat. You double the damage. And then when you defeat him, you have to draw four cards. So even though he has 10 health per player, you know, if you have lightning attacks on your cards, then you can bring him down pretty fast and you have to draw four cards. Mana drain, you draw two cards and then everybody's going to have to discard cards based on the resource type, but maybe you won't have to discard cards. That one's really cool. Goblin, if you defeat him, you remove two threat. The troll, if you defeat him, you get a free ally out of your discard pile. Like, you just get loot for defeating these things. It's so cool. The fetch quest side scheme is completely optional. It doesn't do anything other than it searches when it comes out. But if you defeat it, you get to search your deck for a card and play it for free. Just completely optional side quest. And then the environment gives you plus one hand size. But it also amplifies the villain while it's in play. So just a really, really fun set. We're going to call this a nice mix. It's a little bit of everything. It's really, really fun. It's not too hard. The minions aren't as bad as they look because of they have weaknesses. Really, really love that one. And finally, in Mojo, we have Western, which is also really cool. You have these gunslingers that come out with quick strike, but if you spend two lightning resources, you get to shoot them first. Oh, so awesome. You have the card shark here that he's going to deal some indirect. He's actually pretty nasty. Seven health, three attack. The game of cards, you have to draw five cards, but then you discard five cards. You might lose some of your stuff, so just like you're playing poker. Better Alive puts a bounty on a minion. Sorry, I, I just realized I'm talking a lot about these Mojo ones, but just they're brand new and they're really, really fun. Uh, I was going to give a minion plus three health, but if you defeat it, you get to add a card from discard pile to your hand, so it's like you collected the bounty. And then the environment gives every enemy attack overkill, but you increase, and you increase every damage the characters take by one. So that one can really speed up an encounter. So the Mojo ones are just awesome. Uh, we're going to call that one a nice mix as well. You could easily play that with just about anybody. But those are just, they're so flavorful and they're so fun that I really, really hope a lot of people will go back and play them in other scenarios, but they work super, super well in the Mojo ones, of course. And finally, we come to the last group of encounter sets, which are the ones that have been coming in the backs of the hero packs. The first one was Armadillo that came with Nova. So these are mostly all lieutenant types. Now, Armadillo's whole theme is around toughness. He can get extra toughness cards. He can give the villain toughness. So this one can actually be pretty difficult, and he might give the villain an extra activation if they happen to have tough, which they might because of him, and he can be pretty hard to deal with. So this is a really fun one. I do like to include him from time to time. Next up was Zax. This one is weirdly specific in that it's all about energy resources, so it's particularly bad for people like Thor, Captain Marvel, and Iron Man. But there are cards in here that will turn all of your cards into energy resources so that you could still be punished if you're not happening to be playing one of those heroes. This one is, this one's okay. I, I don't, I've played this one a couple times and it's, it's fine. It's, it's on the easier side, I think, or maybe I just got lucky. But this isn't one I've included a lot, but he's a cool lieutenant. If you are playing one of those heroes that he might be particularly bad against, then that might be fun for the theme and the extra challenge. Speaking of challenge... We have the Iron Spiders Sinister Six. This is another one of the bigger groups of heavies. They're really nasty minions with a lot of health, really bad abilities, and most of them either have really bad boost effects or really high boost icons. So this one, adding this to any encounter deck, is going to make your life more difficult, but they are really cool. They have some fun effects to have to deal with. But I would say these are definitely more on the challenging side, especially this Iron Spider. He has Guard, Patrol, Retaliate, and Toughness, and Overkill. So if you want to ratchet up somebody that's looking for minions, that is definitely going to add some spider flavor, but also some difficulty to your encounter. And if you're really looking for some spider flavor, there's the Inheritors. This is a really, sort of like Zach's, kind of weirdly specific group in that they really, really hate the Web Warriors, which makes sense. It's what they are in the comics. Like they're hunting the spider totems. But if you're not playing a Web Warrior, they might seem a little bit less scary, and they are, but they're still pretty bad because they all boost each other. This one gives them all retaliate, gives them all villainous, gives them all attack, you know, things like that. But if you are playing a web warrior, when they come into play, they also do something additionally bad. They're all pretty big. They all have high stats. They all have high boost effects. Like this is probably one of the hardest modular encounter sets in the game, especially if you're playing a web warrior hero. So, you know, include at your own peril. But, you know, these ones that are in the hero packs, you know, none of the villains are calling for these because they don't know if you have these or not. So 
you have to switch in modulars if you want to try playing with some of these. And I definitely recommend it. They are really different. They're going to shake up your older encounters and they're going to add a lot of extra flavor to your games. Finally, we come to the two newest ones. We have the Shadow King that came with Storm. He is a lieutenant type that is all about messing with your allies. So this is another one of those like Legions of Hell, Enchantress, that if you're playing an ally heavy strategy, might be fun to bring him along for the extra challenge. He's a real pain and then he's going to steal one of your allies. And then until you get rid of that ally, he, you can't, can't deal with this guy. So this one's decently tough depending on how bad of a ally he stole from you. If it's a kind of a weak, smaller ally, it's not that big of a deal. But if he stole one of your good ones, he might be a real pain to deal with. And then finally, we come to Lady Deathstrike that came with Wolverine. This one is super nasty because it's all about causing you to discard cards at random from your hand. Nobody ever wants to do that. That is not a fun thing to do. So you're really going to want to be looking for a challenge if you want this one because that is just not a fun effect to add to your deck. She has these two adamantium upgrades that give plus two attack to the villain. So this is a particularly difficult one that I don't know how often I'm going to see, but again, if you're looking for a challenge or like the theme of it, you know, if you're playing Wolverine, you might consider throwing her in just to have that extra theme, but you've got her there as well. And that is every modular encounter set in the game so far, except now this does verge on house rule territory a little bit, but if you really want to, every single hero in the game comes with their own nemesis set that plays exactly like a modular encounter set. It's going to have a minion. It's going to have some other things to support that minion. They're pretty much all lieutenant types, but really you could just throw them in with anybody. Or you might even consider just throwing them in as an extra modular encounter, just as if Shadows of the Past was called for, just to get some different ones. I'm not going to go through all of them, my goodness. But that's definitely something I know people like to do is to grab a Nemesis set and throw it in. And there's just so many different ones. You could easily construct some nice theme or find some that play well with your villain. If you're really looking at what the villain is trying to do, find a nemesis that might do something similar. So that's another thing I definitely wanted to make sure I mentioned because I know it's something people like to do. Okay, so that was a pretty comprehensive overview of every single modular encounter set in the game. Now, these are just the six main categories I sort of made up to make it easy to figure out which ones I think would work well with certain villains. But like I said, it's meant to work with the thread I'm going to start on Board Game Geek. So feel free to reference that anytime you're looking for what I would consider to be a good match for a particular villain based on these categories. And I'm going to have some additional categories in that list just to narrow things down a little bit. But I don't want to go over them here just because this is running a little bit long and you'll be able to see it there. Now, if you're looking for specific recommendations for specific villains, you know, I know this was a little bit more generalized. I want to point you to Play to Game with Steve Kimmel, his channel. I'm sure you're already familiar with it, but if you're not, he is doing a series called Villains Beyond, where he is doing one video at a time for each villain, and he is going over exactly what that villain's trying to do, good strategies against that villain, and also recommended modular encounter sets very specific to that villain. So this is more of a general overview. He's doing an amazing job of giving very specific recommendations. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below as well. So I want to thank you for joining me and just listening to me go on and on about modular encounter sets. I just think these are so awesome. And there are so many of them that would never, ever get played if you didn't switch them out because most of these aren't called for. Over half of them are never recommended. And there are so, so many fun ones. So if you're going back and playing older villains or you're just playing somebody you've played a lot, I really hope you'll consider maybe trying a different encounter set just to see if that adds a little bit more spice, a little more flavor, a little bit more fun. We have a level of control over our experience in this game that you don't really get in most other cooperative games. So I'm hoping to encourage you to take advantage of it, and that if that makes it fun for you, then great. And if not, again, I'm not trying to stress anybody out or make somebody do something they don't want to do. It's just something I think is fun, and I want to share my experience with you guys. So I want to thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Change Your Game. I've got one more in this series coming up, all about whether or not it's time to start trying expert mode. I know there's a lot of players that are hesitant. They get a little nervous about it. And uh, we're just going to take a look at what jumping up from standard expert might look like, things that might help you, and reasons why it's not as scary as it might sound. But until then, uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you next time we get up and game. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.